And also as the poet said, كُلُّ الْحَوَادِثِ مَبْدَاهَا مِنَ النَّظَرِ وَمُعْظَمُ النَّارِ مِنْ مُسْتَصْغَرِ الشَّرَرِ كَمْ نَظْرَةٍ فَتَكَتْ فِي قَلْبِ صَاحِبِهَا فَتْكَ السِّهَامِ بِلَا قَوْسٍ وَلَا وَتَرِ Every event, مَبْدَاهَا, its beginning is from what? من النَّظَرِ looking. وَمُعْظَمُ النَّارِ and the majority of the fire is what? من مستصغر الشرر it is the belittled evil a lot of the things that people enter the hellfire is because something they belittled كم نظرة how many looks فتكت في قلب صاحبها it ripped and it it attacked the heart of a person فتك السهام بلا قوس ولا وتري like the attack an arrow which is without a a bow will do but we have to really understand the looking is of types and they are not all of one level the first type is ma huwa muharramun that which is haram a looking which is haram and that is the first type and that is what the author means here the author when he was saying wa irsalu tarf al mar'i أنك فقيدي وطرف الفتى يا صاحي رائد فرجه ومتعبه فغضوض ما استطعت تهتدي he's talking about ما هو محرم he's talking about the look which is haram which is looking at a woman or a person who is a foreigner from you and you don't need to look at her You don't need, and there's no need for you to look at her. The second one is mustahabun, a recommended look. It's actually recommended that you do this looking. And this is, وَهُوَ النَّظَرُ إِلَى مْرَأَةٍ يُرِيدُ أَنْ يَتَزَوَّجْهَا وَغَلَبَ عَلَى ظَنِّهِ إِجَابَتُهُ Amen. Looks at a woman in which he wants to get married to. And he has a high assumption that she's going to accept him. Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, I said to the Prophet, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Jabir said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا خَطَبَ أَحَدُكُمُ الْمَرْأَةِ If one of you Wants to get married to a woman. فَإِنْ إِسْتَطَاعَ يَنْظُرَ إِلَى مَا يَدْعُوهُ إِلَى نِكَاحِهَا فَلْيَفْعَلْ If he is able to look at that which will call him to marry her, then he should do it. فَخَطَبْتُ مَرَأَةً He said, I wanted to get married to a woman. And so this is what I did. فَكُنْتُ أَتَخَبَّأُ لَهَا I was hiding from her. In a place where she could not see me. حَتَّى رَأَيْتُ مِنْهَا until I saw from her, ما دعاني إلى نكاحها, I saw from her that which called me to marry her. فتزوجتها, and so I married her. Abu Dawood narrated this hadith. And Imam Ahmed also narrated in his Sunan. Now the scholars, they differed on this issue now here. Which is that the hadith says, looking at the woman, that which will call you to marry her. What does that mean? And what is the limit? Because when you look at the statement of Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he also said, I looked at her to that which will allow me to say to myself, yes, I do want to marry her. And so what is it that a person can say, I will look at her, that which will allow me to marry her? This is where the scholars differed on. Some scholars, they said, إِلَى وَجْهِهَا وَكَفَيْهَا فَقَطْ It is that the person looks at her, her face and her palms. And that is a riwayah of Imam Muhammad. And another riwayah also he said, nadar. It is permissible for him to look at ila minha ghaliban. Ila minha ghaliban. He is allowed to look at that which becomes apparent from her the majority of the times. What does that mean? It means her face. Kalwaj her face. والرقبة هنك هنك وشو 
Well, Yadaini her two hands. Well, Qadamaini her two feet. And this is something that when a woman is at home, these are the things that will be seen from her. And it's also permissible for him to look at her more than once. He's allowed to look at her more than once. And he's allowed to observe her beauty and analyze her. With her permission and also without her permission. But he's not allowed to be alone with her. As the Prophet ﷺ told us that a man who is alone with a woman, shaitan is the third. So the place that he's doing it from is a place where he's not with her. But he's seeing her from somewhere outside. So here it tells you that you don't have to take permission from her. Al-Qism al-Thalith. The third type of looking which is, and the reason, before I move into the third one, the reason is not to take permission from her, from her is better, is because the man will see the woman in her real state and the way that she really is. Now if, is, now, if this is the, the time of the Sahabas, where there was no surgery like the way it is right now. The cosmetic, medical treatments that women go through and the kind of changes they put themselves through. Or the things that they do to their faces with the makeup. That can be very deceitful. When the man sees her in that state where she's not aware of it, it gives him a good understanding of what woman he's going to marry. Because after the day of the marriage, in the morning when he wakes up, this is the person who's going to wake up and see. So the Sharia doesn't want him and her to bounce from each other and for him to say to her, I don't want to be married to you anymore. Because when I looked at, when I first saw you, this is how you looked. Naam? So, so they both can stay together. But what also needs to be remembered is that the man, he looks at the woman when what? When there is a غَلَبَةُ dhan, High assumption that this matter is going to go through. And that it's going to. But not that a man says to, he's caught looking at every woman. And then he says, oh, okay, I want to get married. This is not what the hadith is referring to or speaking about. Naam. القسم, القسم الثالث, the third type of looking. Which is another المُبَاحُ Another al mubahu the permissible looking. Mubah means here. You don't get a reward for it, nor do you get a sin for it. Mubah was what? What did we say? Yastawi tarafan. The two sides are equal. The reward and the sinning are both equal, meaning none of them take place. And this is the look which is نَظْرَةُ الْفَجْأَةِ مِنَ الْأَجْنَبِيَّةِ When a man suddenly looks at a woman, unintentionally, he did not intend to look at her. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to Ali ibn Abi Talib, as Imam Abu Dawood narrated in his Sunan, Imam Ahmad narrated in his Musnad, Tirmidhi narrated it in his Jami'ah. Also, huh? That Ali ibn Abi Talib, the Prophet said to him, and the hadith is the hadith of Buraida, radiallahu ta'ala, anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Ali, لا تتبع النظرة النظرة Do not follow a look with another look. فإن لك الأولى, the first one is for you, meaning you are not held a card for it. وليست لك الآخرة You see, the last one is not for you, meaning it's against you if you look at it again. Also, what is nadra? Looking which is mubah is the man to look at his wife, all her body. To look at the body of his wife. That involves her, her private part. It's mubah for the man to look at her. Some scholars, they said, no, it is not permissible for him to look at her. Her private part, or sorry, it is disliked for him to look at her private part. 
based on a hadith which she said Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha ma ra'aytu minhu rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma ra'aytuhu min rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa la ra'ahu minni that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not see it from me and I did not see it from him meaning her private part and his private part they said that this based on this hadith and scholars have weakened this narration also, the nadra which is mubah is the nadra which is mubah is a man to look at his slave girl, her body, but he's not allowed to look at her if his slave is a al mushtaraka. A mushtaraka is a slave, a slave which her and somebody else own it together. The milka, I mean the mulk, sorry, milkuha, the ownership of the slave, بينه وبين غيره, is between him and another person. Also, what is another which is mubah, is the looking which is a need calls for it. A need calls for it. And it's like the doctor. Also is the looking at a child which is small in age. You're allowed to look at them. A child which is small in age. If it's a young girl, you're allowed to look at her. But you're not allowed to look at the private part. Also the woman who... Huh? He is, who is from your maharim, your family members. Even them, you're only allowed to see from them that which is apparent on their day-to-day -day basis. And from those which we have mentioned is her face, her neck, her two hands, her foot, her hair. You can see her shin, you can even see. And the list goes on. But those are the three types of looking. Another which is haram, and another a looking which is mustahab, and a look which is mubah. So the Shaykh Rahimullah is referring to which one? The looking which is haram. وَيَحْرُمُ بَهْتٌ وَاغْتِيَابٌ نَمِيمَةٌ وَإِفْشَاءُ سِرٍ ثُمَّ لَعْنُ مُقَيَّدِ وَفُحْشٌ وَمَكْرٌ وَالْبَذَى وَخَدِيعَةٌ وَسُخْرِيَّةٌ وَالْهُزْءُ جَاءَ مُشَدَّدِي The Shaykh said وَيَحْرُمُ It is haram بَهْتٌ بَهْت is haram بَهْت As Jawhari said in his sihah The word is بَهَتَّهُ بَهْتًا وَبُهْتَانًا فَهُوَ بَهَّات is when you say about a person It's when you say about somebody that which they have not did To say about somebody that which they have not did This is called what? Buhtan al buhtan. It is that which you say about a person in which they have not said And it's lying It is lying and it's not permissible it's forging a statement against a person and lying about them. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us that lying and the serious consequences which it has. The Prophet said, Alaykum is sitq, be truthful. فَإِنَّ الصِّدْقَ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْبِرِّ Because truthfulness leads to righteousness. وَالْبِرَّ and righteousness يَهْدِي إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ It will lead you to paradise, Jannah. وَمَا يَزَالُ الرَّجُلُ يَصْدُقُ وَيَتَحَرَّ الصِّدْقَ and a person does not continuously stick to being truthful and holding on to truthfulness until he is written in the eyes of Allah and he is written as a truthful one. And stay away from lying. Lying will lead you to transgressions. Huh? And it will lead you to becoming a disobedient individual. And fujur, it will lead you to, it will lead you to the fire. 
and a person is not continuous in lying and he keeps doing this evil act of lying until he is written as a liar. Abu Zur'at al-Razi said to Imam Muhammad one day, he said to Imam Muhammad ibn Hanbal, كيف تخلصت من سيف المعتصم وصوت الواثق Abu Zur'at al-Razi said to Imam Muhammad, how did you get away from the sword of Mu'tasim? Because Imam Muhammad was in prison, as we're all aware of, based on the statement of the Qur'an being makhluq. Imam Muhammad refused to say that. He, believed, he said that the Qur'an is not created and he's stuck by the, the evidences. And the statement of the Qur'an, وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ أَبْلِغْهُ مَأْمَنَا So Imam Ahmed was beaten and he was hurt. Abu Zura asked him and said to him, How did you get away from the sword of Mu'tasim? I mean, he never killed you. وَصَوْطِ الْوَاثِقِ And the whip and the lash of al wathiq which was another leader. Imam Ahmed said, لَوْ وُضِعَ الصِّدْقُ عَلَى جُرْحٍ لَبَرَاءَ Imam Ahmed said, If truthfulness was placed upon a wound, it will be cured. وَاغْتِيَابٌ اغْتِيَاب means backbiting is also prohibited, which is the second one. To backbite. الجوهري بن الصحاح said اغتابه اغتيابا اذا وقع والاسم الغيبة وهو ان يتكلم خلف انسان مستور بما يغمه لو سمعه فان كان صدقا سمي غيبة وان كان كذبا سمي بهتانا is to speak about somebody behind their back to say about them that which is that which will anger them if you were to say it to them it will distress them even if it's truthful, it's called backbiting. And if you lie about it, then that is called buhtan. Abu Huraira said that the Prophet Sallallahu said, Atadruna mal ghibah. Do you know what backbiting is? The Sahabas, they said, only Allah and His Messenger know. The Prophet said, Dhikruka akhaka bima yakrah. It is to say about your brother that which he dislikes. Then the Sahabas then said, أَفَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ كَانَ فِي أَخِي مَا أَقُولُ What about if it's in my brother that which I'm saying about him? What about if he is what I'm saying about him? The Prophet said, إِنْ كَانَ فِي مَا تَقُولُ Even if it's in him that which you're saying about him, فَقَدْ اِغْتَبْتَهُ You have backbited him. وَإِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ فِيهِ مَا تَقُولُ فِيهِ فَقَدْ بَهَتَّهُ And if what you're saying about him isn't present in him, then what you have done is buhtan. You have forged against him that which he has not said or done and Allah tabarak wa ta'ala prohibited from us huh? Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he prohibited from us to backbite one another he said do not backbite one another and Allah tabarak wa ta'ala also said do not backbite one another that we don't speak about that which we don't have knowledge of. Because our hearing, our seeing, and our hearts, all of them, Allah wa ta'ala is responsible of them. And that we are going to be accounted for it the day of judgment. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, in the hadith of Abi Barzat al-Aslami, Imam Ahmed narrated in Abi Dawood, Imam Ahmed and Abu Dawood narrated it that the Prophet said, Ya ma'ashara man amana bi lisanihi wa lam yadkhul al-iman fi qalbi la taqtabu al-nasa wa la tattabi'u awratihim fa innahu man yattabi' awratihim tatabba' Allahu awratahu wa man tatabba' Allahu awratahu yufdihhu fi baytihi The Prophet said, those of you who believe, Iman has entered their hearts. 
Don't backbite your Muslim brothers. Don't backbite the people. Do not follow their shortcomings. For verily anyone who follows the shortcomings of the people, Allah Taala will follow up your shortcomings. And anyone who Allah follows up his shortcomings, Allah will embarrass you even in your household. Things that you do behind closed doors privately, it will be out in the open. You'll be exposed. Six times backbiting is permissible. There are six places where backbiting is permissible. And Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah in his kitab Al-Riyad al-Salihin Imam al-Nawawi in his kitab Riyad al-Salihin he chaptered in his kitab Riyad al-Salihin he chaptered in it Babu ma yubahu min al-ghibah He said Babu the chapter the backbiting which is permissible. Abu Hamid al-Ghazali and also Ibn Abi Al-Fath Al-Ba'li they also mention these six times when it's permissible to backbite. So it's something that the scholars mentioned. The first one is a person who is oppressed. Al-Mutadallim yadhkuru dhulma al-zalim 'inda as-sultan liyadfa' dhulmahu. A person who's been oppressed. He mentions the oppression that he was put through in the presence of the the judge. So the oppression can be repelled and it can be pushed away from him. So he's going to have to speak about his brother in a very bad light. The second one is the one who backbites so he can change an evil. He's backbiting because he wants to change an evil. Number three is the one who calls a scholar a mufti. And he wants to ask him a question about a matter. Like when Hinda came to the Prophet Sallallahu and she said, Inna Aba Sufyan Rajulun Shahih. My husband Sufyan is a stingy individual. <laughs> he doesn't give. This is all permissible for her. Because she needs to know an Islamic ruling on this particular matter. Number four. Warning the Muslims from an evil of a person. So you're scared a person may fall into the trap of this individual. You're allowed to warn him or her from this individual. And at, that, at this particular moment, it is permissible for you to speak ill against this individual in order to warn a Muslim from it. Number five. The person is well known for this name. The name. Huh? He has a name which is kind of backbiting. Are you with me? Such as the name A'mash. You see, a person may have a name, but the name may not be a good thing. But this is his name, and he's known for this. So you're allowed to call it by that name. The sixth one is, this person is out and about when it comes to their own shortcomings and their sins. He talks about his own shortcomings out in the open. At this particular moment, because he has brought it out in the open, he is allowed to be spoken about it or said, said about it. It is permissible to say about it regarding him. Then the Sheikh said also Namimatun, Namima is also prohibited. Namima means it means tail bearing. Namima is tail bearing. It basically means you're going around and telling people, ah, so and so said this about you, so and so said this about you, so and so said this about you. It's also, also the word Qattat is also the same and Qassaf. It's the same as the meaning of Namam. And the man is the one who does the tail bearing. The Prophet ﷺ told us in the hadith, Imam al Bukhari and Muslim both narrated it, that the Prophet ﷺ, he said, لا يدخل الجنة قتات. The one who does namima, he will not enter Jannah. He will not enter Jannah. 
It's a very severe issue. وَإِفْشَاءُ سِرِّنْ Also what is prohibited is to spread a secret that a person entrusted with you. وَإِفْشَاءُ سِرِّنْ To spread a secret. The word ifsha means, it comes from the word fasha al-khabaru yafshu fushuwan aydha'a is when you announce it out in the open. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he said to us in the Qur'an, وَأُوفُوا بِالْعَهْدِ إِنَّ الْعَهْدَ كَانَ مَسْؤُولًا Fulfill the vows and the oaths that you make. Because you're going to be responsible for the oaths that you make. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ مِنْ أَشَرِّ النَّاسِ مَنْزِلَةِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ The one who has the severest punishment in station the day of judgment, is the man, يُفْضِي إِلَى إِمْرَأَةٍ He will have sexual intimacy with his wife. You see, وَتَفْضِي إِلَيْهِ ثُمَّ يُنْشِرْهَا ثُمَّ يُنْشِرُ سِرَّهَا And then he goes out and about and he tells that which he has done with her. Or the vice versa. The woman does that. She has a relationship with her husband and she goes out to the public and she tells the people how her relationship between her and her husband is. But the hadith mentions she spreads the secret. The secret. Because this is meant to be a matter that no one should know about. It's a secret and it stays as a secret. It stays as a secret. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Umar came up to him one day and he presented his daughter Hafsa to Umar radiallahu ta'ala, Abu Bakr. Umar presented his daughter Hafsa to Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr did not give him a reply. Meaning did not accept or did not give him a response. After a period of time, the Prophet married Hafsa. Abu Bakr saw Umar and he said to him, لَعَلَّكَ وَجَدْتَ عَلَيَّ حِينَ عَرَضْتَ عَلَيَّ حَفْصَةَ فَلَمْ أَرْجِعْ إِلَيْكَ شَيْئًا You probably had something towards me when you presented your daughter Hafsa to me and I never gave you a reply. You got upset somehow with me. And Umar said, yes, I did. And then Abu Bakr said to him, فَإِنَّهُ لَمْ يَمْنَعْنِي Nothing prevented me. أَنْ أَرْجَعْ أَنْ أَرْجِعَ إِلَيْكَ Nothing prevented me from coming back to you. In that which you said to me. But فَيْمَا عَرَضْتَ عَلَيَّ Except إِلَّا أَنِّي كُنْتُ عَلِمْتُ أَنَّ النَّبِيَّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ ذَكَرَهَا فَلَمْ أَكُلْ لِأُفْشِيَ سِرَّ الرَّسُولِ اللَّهِ I knew the Prophet ﷺ was mentioning her. That he wanted to get married to her. And I was not one who wanted to spread the Prophet's secret. So, spreading a secret that a person entrusted with you is a very bad, evil act. Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that the Prophet came to me one time. Atta ilayya Rasulullah wa ana al'abu ma'al ghilman. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Anas said, I was praying with, my, with young boys, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to Anas. Fasallam alayna, he gave us salam. Fabaathani fi hajatin. And the Prophet pulled Anas to the side. He told him to do something for him. فَأَبْطَأْتُ عَلَى أُمِّي فَلَمَّا جِئْتُ قَالَتْ مَا حَبَسَكَ Anas then said, I came late to my mother. And so my mother asked me, what is it that imprisoned you? Why were you late for? He said, بَعَثَنِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ فِي حَاجَةٍ The Prophet ﷺ had sent me to a, a, a duty. He wanted me to do something for him. His mother said to him, وَمَا حَاجَتُهُ What was it that he wanted from you? I said to my mother, إِنَّهَا سِرٌ It was a secret. قَالَتْ She said to me, لَا تُخْبِرْ بِسِرَّ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا Do not tell the secret of the Prophet to anyone. Anas ibn Malik 
he said to his slave boy, Thabit al Bulani, he said to him, Wallahi, Law haddath to be ahad al haddath to ka. Law haddath to. Law haddath to be ahadan. La haddath to ka be he ya thabitu. If I was to tell any individual, I would have informed you, O Thabit. Ibn Abdul Bar, he narrated in his book, Bahjatul Majalis, that the Prophet said, Man sarra, man asarra ila akhihi sirra. Anyone who tells his brother a secret or his sister a secret, lam yahilla lahu an yufshiyahu, an yufshiyahu alayhi. It is not permissible for him to go out and spread the news or the secret that was given to you. The Prophet said, anyone who tells his Muslim brother or sister a secret, it is not permissible for the one who has told the secret to go out and to tell the secret. Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, who is the Prophet's uncle, Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, who is the Prophet's uncle, he said to his son one day, Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said to his own son, Abdullah, Ya Bunaya, my son, Inni ara, I see, Amir al-Mu'minina yudnik, I see that Umar ibn Khattab, he is bringing you closer, meaning, he really sees you as a good person, he loves you, and he brings you close in his gatherings, to Abdullah ibn Abbas, Fahfaz anni thalathan, memorize three things from me, Meaning, take these three things from me and do it. The first one is, لا تفشين لا تفشين سرا لا تفشين سرا. Do not spread a secret. He told you. ولا تغتابن أحدا. And do not backbite anyone. ولا يطلع عنا منك على كذبة. And do not also let him see from you a lie. And do not let him see from you a lie. We'll stop there, inshallah ta'ala.